Welcome back. Well, I don't exactly have a photo bomb kitty for you. He is directly under my seat here, um, purring. I can still hear him purring. Uh, so he'll probably be back in a little bit, but yeah. You know, he is his own boss, so he comes and goes on his schedule. Well, at long last, I have the lampshade I've been trying to get from Jocelyn. And as you can see here, look, bits and pieces, it is crumbling and falling apart. So we're going to take care of that today. In fact, we're going to start as soon as we get back. So here's our lampshade. Uh, before we get going, I just want to show you this. You've seen this one before. This is what it is supposed to look like. This is a parchment lampshade that is clean, properly laced, and in good condition. This is a parchment lampshade that is dirty and held together with the tw twist ties from a loaf of bread. Well, you can come up if you want to. I said you could. The first thing we have to do to deal with this is take it apart. Because, as you can see, it's already coming apart. So, my concern is if I grab it the wrong way, I could rip or tear. So, we're not even going to try to clean it like this. That would be, that would just be dangerous. We, we could end up hurting the lamp. So we are unlacing the bread tie. See, no kidding, bread tie. And this is how the shade goes together. This is what we call a clip-on shade because these two little rings clip around the light bulb. You use them on a regular incandescent light bulb or on the newer LED light bulbs that are designed to look like incandescents. Compact fluorescents really do not work with bulb with um, bulb holders like this because, as you know, they're spiraled and there's not much for these little rings to catch on to. And this is at the top of the shade. This is the very top, so you can see where the bulb comes in. And then the rest of this is below. So when our light is turned on, the bulb is right behind this portion of the shade and then filtering down through the lower portion. Well, what we're going to do when we take this apart is very carefully get these laces out. Now, this is not always easy. I have a piece of lace right here that is stuck to the parchment. It does not want to lift. So I'm just going to coax it a little. Now I'm not cutting it off. I'm just getting my the tip of my knife under there and convincing it that it would like to leave, that it would be happier elsewhere. Now we're going to cut this portion. Um, and this is the lacing that is holding the lower part of this upper shade into the frame. So I'm probably going to do quite a lot of cutting because I don't want to have to re-thread this through the holes. Um, and as you can see, there's not a lot to cut really. It's just going to fall apart. And that's one of the reasons that we have to deal with this. Because when they get old like this, even if they look good, the lacing is old, the parchment is old, and they can just start crumbling. And that's, as you can see, that's what's happening here. Um, you can't even remove um, the lacing without it just coming apart in your hands. 
So, once we get this, once we get this all sort of unstrung, unlaced, free, um, I'm going to be able to take that section, uh, and by that I mean the upper part of the shade. We got another one that's stuck to the shade. Okay. Now we want this to slide out. Theoretically, it's going to. All right, there we go. We're setting the bottom aside. All right, let's bring this back over again so that you can see. Obviously, we really need cleaning. Now, when we work with something like this, this is parchment, and I do not know if this is genuine parchment or some sort of synthetic parchment. Um, it has the feel of paper, but... I don't know, along the seam, that seam certainly seems more like um, genuine parchment. And parchment, by the way, is animal hide. Um, so first thing we're doing is we are taking a magic eraser, dipping it in water, and we're just going to wipe this off, see how much of the dirt we can get off with the magic eraser, first of all. Whenever you start a cleaning project on something this old and this fragile, you go from the least invasive methods forward. So it's like, what will do the least amount of harm? And in this case, it's a magic eraser. And stuff is coming off. I don't know if you can see that. I'm actually getting some stuff off. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm getting a lot off, but I'm getting a lot on my hands, too. There we go. Now we're getting some. So that's from the inside where there was a lot of dust accumulating. Remember, the shade is angled down, so dust will accumulate on the inside show you another trick while we're doing this whisk I have a little bit of dishwashing liquid in here so I'm just going to whisk this up until we get a froth um, I want it to look like meringue another thing. Oh, look. That's actually getting us a lot of cleaning. So, we're going to stick with this for a while. Now, once we are through cleaning this, uh, and that's about all we're going to be able to do for today, is to take it apart because I want you to see how I take the other section apart as well. We're going to be able to take it apart. We're going to be able to get it clean, but we are, we're not going to have the time to relace it. So I'm going to set that aside. You can see what's going on there. And now we're going to start working on this. We've got a whole section here. Uh, where the lacing has already come loose 
So that's, oh, and as you can see, it's just, it's coming out. And that's always your indication that it needs to be repaired. When uh, this is redone, the lace is, well, this is not going to happen. Now, Jocelyn has this shade on a dark brown mid-century lamp. And my first thought was, well, I'll match the lacing. Oh, here, just a ring on the bottom. Uh, but while I've got this and I've got it out, I'm going to make sure the ring is perfectly round. So if there are any little dents, I'm going to see about taking them out. And the way I'm going to make sure this is round is I'm just going to take a ruler and measure across in a number of positions and see if I've got something that's nice and round. And I think that's pretty good. Um, anyway, I was talking about the, uh, the lacing. My first thought was, well, we'll get lacing that will be nice and dark brown and match the lamp. And then I rethought that. Now, that's great if she never, ever wants to take this shade off the brown lamp. But I know Jocelyn. Um, she changes her shades on her lamps. She changes her lamps. It's just, this is just what she does. By the way, I think this is something everybody should do. You know, just because you have a lamp and you have a lamp shade and it's been there and they've been together doesn't mean that you cannot make changes. So what happens if she wants to move this to another lamp? So I decided what I was going to do was get a clear uh, gimp, the lacing. It's like a clear plastic with gold speckles. And I've used that on a fiberglass shade. Um, and I'll take a picture of that fiberglass shade uh, no, I won't. I'll save that for next time. I will actually bring the fiberglass shade right out here when we start relacing this, just like I've, I've done this one so that, you know, you have some sense of the before and after of the job. Um, I think that will make it much more versatile. She'll be able to put, uh, she'll be able to put the shade on just about any lamp. Now, let's this. there we go. And there's our bottom part. And as you can see, and, and by the way, this is upside down. This is the way it looks when this portion is on so that this section is a little bit below the top of this piece, as you can see. So that's the way it looks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this very carefully. I want to make sure both of our rings are round, that they are all, all the way around the same distance apart, and that one of them is not, you know, riding too high in places, riding too low in others. That's what I'm going to do here. Also, I'm going to be sure to clean them off. I'm going to clean them off with a metal polish. I'm not polishing them up because they're going to be completely hidden. But I can see from looking at my hands that there's rust on them. And what I'm not going to do is spend hours cleaning this up and then put it right back on there to get rust on it. All right, so that's how we're doing this. Those pieces are just going to stay over here for the moment. And I have my huge pile of, can you see this? That is just the crumbled um, gimp that had been holding this lamp together, well, or not holding this lamp together. Now, so what happens from here on out is just, I will continue to clean. Um, and I'm going to try to get this as clean as the other shade. And I should probably bring this back into the camera a little 
so that you can just see the color difference. That's what I want. I want this one to be as close to that as possible. That is not pure white. That's sort of an off-white, um, a sort of a creamy color. Uh, and that's what we want from this. We want it as close to that as we can get. Uh, we want enough of the dirt and the grunge off. And also, when I do this, see right up here, there are little indentations. It's where the gimp has gone through the hole and sort of been roped around the edge and pulled the edge down. I'm going to try to work those back out flat as I'm cleaning. And the reason for that is I will probably do this. Uh, I'll probably um, lace this the very same way they laced it because I do that. Um, when I lace my own lamps, I do it the way they were originally done with the lacings on the top and the bottom, notice the top and the bottom, going in the same direction. That's how they were originally done. If you look at modern reproduction fiberglass lampshades, you'll see they very often do not do that. They'll have them going left to right and then right to left. And um, I'm sure there are people who find that decorative but it's not original it's not how they were done so that's not how i do it um, now let's see if we can see this all right at this point i feel like i'm starting to get somewhere here i'm able to get this parchment laying a little flat and I'm starting to get some of the dirt and the rust off. Now, I'll be working on this for a while. There's no question about that. This is not going to be something that, you know, you just uh, like lick with a, a little brush or something and it's all better. Um, it's going to take some time to get this all done. Even with the magic eraser, it's nowhere near the wonderful, quick, easy job. You know, you see the magic erase, eraser ads and commercials and what, and they're like, oh, and it just, clean. no, no. There's going to be a lot of elbow grease in this. But if you want a beautiful old lampshade, this is what it takes. Now, in this case, um, the frame, the parchment, it's all going to be um, genuine authentic pieces the lacing as with this lacing uh, th because this is new lacing lacing is going to be new so it's not uh, and as you can see this lacing is unsalvageable there's there's just nothing that can be done with this so I'm inclined to look at lamp lacings as um, just disposable items. You know, you, you keep them, you use them, and then uh, there's a point where you have to replace them, like shoe lacings or um, a, a light bulbs or anything else that is designed to be replaced. Now, one of the reasons that we're doing this particular project now is, well, the reason is because Jocelyn finally gave me the lamp, yay! But because we're going to actually make a lampshade. And before we get into making a lampshade, it's probably a good idea to just see how uh, another lampshade is taken apart and put together. Um, it's a pretty, it's pretty intuitive. If you've ever seen a lampshade, you probably have an awfully good idea of how they come apart and how they go together. But there are a lot of little tricks to it. And we've seen some of those um, just on this piece alone. We've seen 
that the rings go in behind the holes on the underside. Um, and that actually does make a difference when you put things together. I have seen lamps uh, laced the other way around with the rod or, or the ring, the metal ring on the outside. And, you know, that's, that, that's the sort of lamp that you look at that shade and you say to yourself, oh, I should probably buy that just for the sake of redoing it properly. Um, that happens a lot. Sometimes uh, the shade has been, uh, I don't want to say roughly handled, but perhaps handled a lot and the ring has slipped out of its original position and gotten onto the front of the paper. That's not where it belongs. Uh, whether it's parchment or fiberglass, the ring belongs on the underside. The ring was not something that was intended to be seen. Um, in this, well, um, you can see from it, it's purely functional. There's nothing decorative about this. Um, this piece is a little more decorative because it's brass or no it's brass I was going to say or brass plated but actually it's brass so it's a little more decorative but still absolutely not meant to be seen and when we put this together that's what we want it to look like we want it to go right back to the original rings on the inside not being seen and of course the biggest difference in this uh, aside from the fact that it's not going to be falling apart is going to be the fact that hopefully it will be clean um, so and we've talked a lot about cleaning things in the past and you know it's just sometimes you just have to put the time into it. This is one of those things you just have to put the time into it. Um, just go back over it again and again and your little soapy bubbles and your little magic eraser and whatever is getting the most of the gunk off, just stick with it. And when we come back, oh, well, you can come if you want. When we come back, no. Come here. Audie. Come on. He found the camera cord. So he might end up dragging you guys into the next room when he gets that in his mouth. All right. Um, I'm going to continue doing what I've been doing. When we next follow up on this, hopefully this is going to be nice and clean and shiny and just it's going to look good same with this one one thing i will say about both these pieces is they're not damaged they may be dirty as all get out but we have one tiny little tear here and that's near the top and that is almost invisible, and it's probably going to be completely invisible because we'll be lacing right over that area. And I expect that that little tear probably came from the fact that the, uh, the lacing had torn, and as a consequence, it was just sort of falling apart, so it was difficult to even pick it up without putting stress on the wrong places. So when we come back to this, and we are going to come back to this next week, it's going to be our next project. It's going to be nice and clean, hopefully. Keep our fingers crossed. And then I'm going to show you how to lace this. We're going to put this back together. I'll show you how to lace this all up. Um, and once you know how to do that, just like that, you're going to know how to make a mid-century shade. But, of course, we've got our own shade project coming up, which is not going to be a lace-up shade like this. It's going to be very different. So, take care, everyone. Um, 
stay safe. Um, I know, you're waiting for me to say stay indoors. I'm not going to do that. The weather's getting really, really nice. I am not going to stay locked in my house on a sunny day. Um, I'm lucky. I live in a rural area. I can walk up and down my street all afternoon. And actually, the truth is, I walk in the middle of the night. So, yeah. Even if I were in the city, trust me, nobody's on the roads at four in the morning when I'm walking. But as it happens, I'm in a very rural area. And I can literally walk for three or four miles in this area without seeing a live human being. So, stay safe. Um, hopefully, this will all pass quickly. And as I've said before, I'm here. We're just going to keep on making videos. We're going to keep on finding things to do. And we'll get through it. Um, I'd like to say we've gotten through worse, but I'm not sure when. But we'll definitely get through this. Okay? So, take care of yourselves. And I will see you tomorrow. We will finish this project next week on Project Day, which is Sunday. Okay. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.